There's even a big old door in the same spot where the number nine door is in the other warehouse. True, but it's rusted over. I don't think it's opening anytime soon. No lever to open it anyway. Okay, that is actually that is actually very a very good question. Uh, what? Where where does that door lead to? I don't know. Because the other one leads this to the. A, so this is a recycled facility that used to serve pur a purpose, and they just welded over all the doors that are in the way. I guess. Like last last puzzle chamber we were in, like it's it was meant to be a place that did something. So some of the doors were just welded over because they're not part of the, the the game. Yeah, it's just weird to think about. Like, does this also lead you to the outside, or does it lead yeah, you probably. deeper inside? Like, I I don't know the layout of this place, so it's kind of weird to think about. Like, I guess every floor just has a door that can lead out, but maybe one or of these them two works? or these two warehouses do although we don't know how many floors there are either yeah that's true we only have a sense of space for this whole place i'm gonna say it goes and we can't even really make that wild of assumptions about what it's shaped like because it's not a boat yeah <laughs> like we don't even know what it's shaped like whereas the titanic well, we do. we're like it's like this we've seen the outside and it's but very it's not circular. enough information though we don't have enough sense of scale and layout and how many floors and things like that yeah Can we try it anyway try it oh. well shoot why does he keep trying that when he knows that cheating makes you die? It's not cheating. If it you left kind the, of is. If you left the door open, it's his fault. But he'd still kill us. Yeah. We couldn't possibly open that with our bare hands. Duh. How much do you think that thing weighs? He'd have about as much luck trying to lift a pickup truck, even if it was unlocked. Huh. I can do I that. I know what those are. Those white doors? Are they chromatic doors? Hmm. Yeah, seems like it. I mean, look at this. It's one of those things that says lock. Yeah. God damn it! God Just damn it! Next to the other chromatic doors. What is no? Are we do, are we really getting an explanation about what the lock is uh, on the lock in front of the door? There's a sign that seems to say lock. It's just a great thing to be explained in the 50th hour of playing this game. It's also great because we're staring directly at it. Like it would be different if it was like 999 where we didn't zoom into objects. We just had yeah. people standing in front, but we zoomed into the object and then she's like, it says lock. Oh, oh it does? Should I just mash the A button for a bit? I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't kind trust of, I it. I kind of want to escape this description of what a fucking lock door is. So you're saying all the chromatic doors for the next room are white? Different colors before, but I guess things have changed for the I give up. Ah, somebody's coming over the speakers. An gate okay, there we go. Let's go back. What? One of the other teams opened the gate early. What in the hell they do that for? They haven't even started back yet. Alright, this is when Dio opens the door, huh? Yeah. Ah, never mind, White. We just need to get back up there pronto. I keep thinking we're further than that, and we're not. We need to hook up with Alice and Kay. The sooner, the better. Right. Got it. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you go into voice meter and turn the game up a little bit? Like, by five? Might be because of the fan. Because, by the way, everyone, we're playing in a house with a broken air conditioner, and we have a fan, and it's it's a mess. Uh, it's just this, I can't hear the game, actually. Let's turn it up a bit. There we go. That doesn't affect you guys at all. But it affects me! There we go. Can you hear it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Dio, how could you? D -d 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 Dio? You know what I realized? I didn't get my wish. What? I specifically wished when we beat 999 that I want the next game to be a game where we start out knowing about morphogenic sheet fields so that we can move forward from that. But then they just made another game about a guy who doesn't know about morphogenic fields slowly discovering it and only using it just in time for the ending. Again. <gasps> like they made the same story again. Oh. Instead of instead of moving forward with the story. You might be right. This game might just be crap. You know what would make the visual novel way more interesting? What? If it's not an Onori game. You mean... Because if it's not an Onori game, then you're a guy that's making a bunch of decisions based on... Like, he keeps having bad endings happen in his life or whatever the fuck's happening. And then he, but with the power of morphogenic fields, he keeps learning to solve uh, the problem and go around them, like run the little run. Yeah. And that's a way better story. Yeah, but if you don't have like the death game, then why? Then, then you would... have to make more than three rooms. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make a lot, lot more assets instead of this warehouse over and over again where most of the game takes place. Yeah. 
We return to uh, the floor a warehouse to find only two people waiting for us. So here's something that, that broke for me. Mm-hmm. We're going we're to podcast for a second a little bit, probably, because oh. this is a thing. Okay. Uh, so you and I both played the game Stories, Path of Destinies. Yes. But we played that before we played 999, right? Yeah. So we didn't have a we didn't have a point of comparison at the time, and we didn't really think about it. Yeah. But since then, I played Omen Sight, which I recommend so if you since you like stories a lot, if I remember correctly. So I did. You should probably try Omen Sight too. It's very it's similar in a lot of ways, same developers and everything. But that game, Omen Sight, uses the same premise as the as Zero Escape overall, which is that you go through a timeline with other characters, and you pick, you sort of pick a side and see how things go. You get a bad ending. And then you use that information to iterate and go with other characters and change the course of where you're going until you can get a good ending to happen. Okay. And between stories and omen sight, they both they both have the same thing as zero escape, which is that none of the none of the options you can pick are will lead to the good ending at the beginning of the game. Yes. No matter what, you can all you can do to ho- hope to do is get enough information to you can either get a soft piece of progress or hard progress. What I which I mean soft progress is when you get a hint where you as a player can think, oh, if I go that way, I bet that's where I get a good thing to happen. That's better than that. Like, you just get a failure that's not helpful. Yeah. But it gives you information that might help you pick a better path. Or you get hard progress, which is like the lock system in this game. Or Okay. And, and both stories and Omen Sight also had hard progress, because in stories you learn four truths over the course of the game, remember? Yes. And once you have those four truths, you can then, you can then ha- access the true ending. Because the problem with the true ending is that it's a thing that the player's character would not reasonably do with no, without the information. Yes, correct. So they need the power of morphogenic fields to unlock for them knowing the correct way to the right path, right? Correct. So that's how the structure of the game comes in. This game has that too. But I just can't help but notice how fuck... Like, I beat all of Omen Sight in probably 15 episodes, I think. Okay. And I swear the story, I think, is just as complicated as the entirety of Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. Think about that. And also, that game is like 50% or more of just combat with little story in it. So, like, it's like... A four-hour story, basically, arguably, was pr- I think was just as character motivated and just as complex, and has a bunch of different crazy branches and endings and so on, and then a final uh, ending and everything. I think it's just as complicated, ultimately, as Zero Escape. It's just this game is such a weird mess of like overpacked garbage and like weird nonsense, and just and just retreading your steps over and over again. Yes. Like you know what happens in Omen Sight when you find out new information? What? First of all, you unlock a thing called Omen Sight, which is how it's when you see a reality for it's, it's when you see the other reality. Okay. What's cool about it is you can show with the Omen Sight to other characters and they and they'll believe you. Okay. So then you can like so what you'll like go with the, you'll go with the bear guy. You're like, "Hey bear guy, and you, oh, he's on a revenge. He wants to go fight against this evil this army he hates for revenge." Well, here's this piece of evidence that completely fucking shatters your world view. And he's like, oh, fuck. And he goes, and then and then you go with him that day, and you go do f- five completely different missions than he did last time. Because you completely changed the course of his day by showing him that piece of information that you gained from the previous timeline. And huh. You see the, you see the difference there? Yeah, there's it's more... Different shit happens. No, 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 no Keith. The, I the see the difference. The problem here with Zero Escape is that they, uh, they take the morphogenic field idea, and they use it in the least interesting possible way, which is to put you in a fucking death game with really constrained rules where you can't do anything besides play the game. So all these different timelines don't aren't interesting and are full of repetition forever. Like the the basic premise of this game is what drags it down even more than the writing itself is just the fact that we we have to go to the fucking white the door with the white rooms like 12 times. Yeah. And then re-explain what they are over and over again because this game doesn't play, take place in the world. Like, this, this is not a world, like, it's not like, oh, we're on the streets of Tokyo and some weird organization's after us and we're going to dodge them with all these morphogenic fields where they keep catching us and we learn how to d- avoid them or like any other premise you could think of. Yes. They gave us the most boring possible premise, which is you're stuck in this room forever. And no matter how much you learn, you're going to be stuck in the game, in these rooms the entire game and your rewards, the game ends. <laughs> Like, there's no version of this game where you aren't stuck here forever, repeat and just spinning your wheels. Your only reward is that when you finally get the final solution, the credits roll, and you're given the sweet release of not being in this fucking warehouse anymore. Here's the thing, uh, Zero Escape has made, uh, what I would, what I, based on my assumption, I'm, uh, I'm assuming the Zero Escape is made on the thinnest ice of budgets possible. I think the game has been given, I think the game was probably given 
you know, nothing to work with and told, make something out of it. So the idea of adding more work or adding more, uh, more gameplay, like you would in Omen Sight, where you said, it's like, we go on five different missions now. Which is whoa, weird, because I can whoa. almost guarantee that Omen Sight is, like, lower budget. <laughs> yes and no. So here's the thing, think is that, yes, it is lower budget, but no, because the person that's working on it is able to properly use the budget they have to make something good with it. This guy well, doesn't know how to do that except the, by one padding. The, one of the plot twists is that, oh, by the way, Omen Sight, much like stories, does recycle environments and shit. That's fine. But uh, it's just so much like the story. There's a difference between the, recycling the, environments and recycling literal content. What they do that's like, cool we talk is you, to the what same they do people. is that, that when you play each mission and, and it recycles, the enemies rearrange themselves, and you're you're allied with a different faction each time, or the time of day changes. So the like you can actually look at a particular level, and based on the time of day and which people are the enemies, you can actually see like which particular story branch that was and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas, it also just has a really good writer. And well, like stories was already decently written, but you know who they got on for st uh, story? Uh, I almost said stories too for Over the Omen Sight. Who? Chris Avalon, the guy that did Ow. the guy that did Pillars of Eternity and uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 game we just talked about, the CRPG. That's like about pain, or the title sounds like something painful, or whatever the fuck. Oh God! Um... <laughs> it just deleted itself from my brain. I don't remember what you're talking about. The one that like, keeps coming up in chat all the time. Uh, the one that's not Baldur's Gate or any of those other ones, but it's that one other... Torment. Uh, torment. Torment, yeah. Wow. Wow, it just deleted itself in my brain for a second there. Yeah, uh, the guy, he's, he was the he was the lead writer on Torment and Pillars of Eternity. Oh. I guess, I guess he left uh, due to management issues or something. He, he decided to leave that company. Huh. And now, he, like, he, yeah, he wrote, uh, he wrote Omen Sight. With a couple of other other people, and he right now he's writing a uh, uh, Dying Light two. He's getting around. <laughs> the poor guy, Dying Light two. What kind of plot are you gonna write? Well, I mean, the first one was nothing to talk home about. So, like, if so, so like, if you if you're if you're, I guess because people ask want an example. Like one of the one of the things some people would say with ninety nine is they wanted an example. Oh, they, like, yeah, like, what a good well, what, version is. What's a good version of which the I was game? Like, so. I, I was like kind of at a loss because I was like, what's a good version of a mystery? It's like one of the oldest storytelling fort <laughs> medias in the history <laughs> of the world. What the fuck are you talking about? Sherlock Holmes, motherfucker. But now I have a, actually a really recent example that's yeah. fun and everything, which is that, yeah, if you stories and if you play Zero Escape and you and you don't understand what we could possibly mean about a, what's a good example of this exact premise, uh, Omen Sight is this exact premise done really well with great pacing and every, like every 20 minutes you're in a different story arc and shit's going down and revelations are happening but that's, your understanding of characters that you care about is changing <laughs> like but it's, that's, it's everything you want from a story but this is the thing is like we're talking about at this point now we're not talking about a game we're talking about direct like directing and it's about it's about being able to take it's about one being able to look at the writer and say this is shit redo it uh, and two, it's about being a director and going, no, th as you know, like as a scene, this would not be a good scene to make simply because it's just retelling the same previous scene, except with a slight twist, which is there's no need to tell all the stuff again, because the, uh, their excuse would be it's a visual novel. You may go on this route, so you may not know that information the first time, but we also are making a game, which means unlike a book, which is a choose your own adventure game book, a game can know if you already have seen that information. Yeah, you previously. can program whether or not we know that information and then yes, stop repeating yourself and you stop don't... being like, oh wow, it's a safe. I wonder what's in the safe. But no, wow, you open the other do not co but, co combo of the same that safe. That fucking shit happens in the same timeline. Yeah. If you go, if you go from one escape room to the next escape room, they treat the safe as they if like it's the same weird the thing. Safe. So you get an explanation of the concept of opening safes like 30 times in a playthrough. Yes, and it's it's that's what that's what's also upsetting is that other games like Stories for instance doesn't feel the need to remind you who these characters are. It doesn't need to remind you who I would not be surprised these weapons if 30 are. 30% of the runtime might be just padding of like just re-explaining the concepts of the game. It is. And that's a thing that's created by the fact that the game insists on being stuck within a game. Yeah. That you loop in forever and you have to keep playing within the structure of the game forever as opposed to going on some kind of adventure. 
And, and you, you have the option to skip dialogue, which is... Well, you don't is, know which dialogue's important. Well, no, but not even that. I'm you, saying you, you can't literally like, have the skip option, which will yeah. automatically skip you. But the that problem that is, skips is that genuinely recycled. It only, yeah. yeah, it only skips genuinely recycled, which is also concerning there's because no, if you start no the like game... There's no, like, edit button that skips redundant dialogue. Yeah, but here's the thing that's even more alarming, is that if you start the game fresh as new, from, from straight from the beginning, after doing an entire route, and you press that skip button... You're gone for a trip, <laughs> and that trip is going. You don't realize how long so much information There's is being like thrown at you. Hours of content you're fast forwarding through. Yes, because and, of how fucking long it was the first and, time. And like, and then it gets more. It gets more bothersome because unlike, and here's the thing that upsets me. Unlike 999, when you go into a damn room with somebody. You, you don't talk to them. No. You have no communication with these people. You don't build any relationship with them. Whereas 999, at least when you went into, like, when we went into the ice box with June and Almost, Santa, we one, had a conversation about Ice Nine. We had a conversation a about weird, them. There's a weird issue where almost every character feels... They're already written. The almost, moment you no, meet like, them, almost, every, almost every character you meet in this game feels less developed than the ones from the previous game. Yes. Like, they, a lot of them feel like Nine from the first game. He just shows up and he's a caricature and he doesn't really go anywhere from there. Yeah. And then he dies. Well, the problem is all the characters in Virtue's Last Award and are be, done. They're written already. And, and people will go and, back on us because we talk shit about the, the dialogue that happened during the rooms, too. But the issue there is that they were really... Back then, the issue was that the... It's not that the fact that they were talking to us, it's that the, the writing was really, like, naked about what they were doing. Yes. They were really clear, like, we are now setting up this thing that will come up later. And, yeah. like, and like the guy with the... And the people talking about it would be talking about it for no reason, usually. Yeah. And, like, are you insane? Do you remember... Do you especially remember that the, June went on a rant about the Titanic that had no fucking purpose yeah. at all to the to the whole our, game? Yeah, our, our conversation like, about June led to the open yours, mons, a tiny bit bit, please, conversation. Yeah. No, wait, no, wait, never mind. That was... That was Doki Doki, actually. Yes. Never mind. But, uh... Was, but that we, there was angry rants at us for like the way we talk about June, and it's like, but she's, she just sounds, she just talks about pseudoscience for no reason. She yeah. judges you for not believing her. She comes out of left no field context. with her ideas and opinions, and that when hit, no one, and that hit parody level when we were in freezing to death in, an, in a freezer, and they're like, let's talk about pseudoscience. I'm like, can we talk about that after this? Yeah. Like, that was why it was so weird. It wasn't the fact that they were talking us to us during the room. No. Being in a room with a couple people is a great way to pare down the cast so we can meet a few of them at a time. I'm not, like, I'm not... It's need just that they did it really poorly in that game, but the idea was right. Like, I'm not I'm not an idiot, and Keith certainly has his fair experience with games that have a lot of fucking story. Yeah. Because it's, you play RPGs like a madman. Oh, yeah. What we're complaining about isn't the fact that we are communicating with the characters. There's so many RPGs it's, I've played that develop things there, better with less dialogue. There's just so many better ways to have a conversation than literally dying and hearing someone go, Did you know that ice just freezes or can't, or uh, like ice won't melt at a certain temperature? Uh, you know what would be great if the ice at this temperature melted because we're dying right now, I'm June. I'm just losing my mind like, about the fact that the flowchart is like 80 or 90% full right now. Yeah. And like our character has expressed no particular power of any kind over like knowing how to use morphogenic fields. He has. All that's happened because so far is we've had it remembered one code. No, but remember we've had it three or four times now. We've had an instance where he remembers something. Remember like the Dio thing when we called Dio out for the first time, he was like what's frustrating is, what's frustrating is that he has to like but he doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, and not in the what, sense, not even in the sense of going it, like. It's essentially frustrating because he's it's been explained to him. Yes. More yeah. kinetic fields have been explained to him as a concept, but only in one timeline, and he doesn't remember that explanation. He doesn't remember that explanation. So but he doesn't know what he's doing, and so he it's he's a really ineffectual, shitty, boring, pain in the ass protagonist because he yeah. doesn't even know what he's doing. At least, at least We're almost uh, done with the game, and he has zero agency and power. At least Junpei was was aware enough to say certain lines like huh that was like I, I felt like I had deja vu there for a second or like called to the fact that there is a there is a feeling associated with like suddenly being able to know something assuredly and finding out that that knowledge is in fact I, correct I also want to say on top of the whole part where they're forcing us to be in a puzzle I mean in, they're forcing us to be inside of a game and other stuff that's incredibly repetitive and stuff like that the other mistake they make is that it's a visual novel with the least interesting possible decisions. Yes, the decisions are only what door to go through. Yeah, in, like in, a, in Detroit, 
your decision will be like, do I shoot this guy or not? Yeah. Or do I try to defend, or, or like little moments of like, oh, these these hazards are coming in. Do I rush to help the girl or do I run over there where I know the gun is and stuff like yeah. that? Like decisions that could lead to a branch in a story and you and, and you can make an informed decision one way or another and like what's going to happen. This game, the decisions are just like, they're just ally or betray or pick a door every single time for the entire game. And that was all of last game and all of this game. Yep, here's the difference though. So the difference in 999 was when you made a decision on a door, it had an actual impact on the story to some degree. Characters would get upset. there was way fewer of them, first of all. Well, yeah, but also characters would get upset, characters would say things, and then when you go into a room, characters would act indignant based or act differently they based on the decision. They job contextualizing some of the door choices. Yes. Because like the first Like there was a door choice where we literally almost killed somebody. Yeah, or there's, but this there was game, a door where one door has an, one door has an exploded corpse in it, and the other one doesn't, and you're choosing which one to go through yes. between those two. And, and but then, this game and actually has the next one also had a corpse in one of the doors, and also you had the choice of do we to go to these two doors that work or this one door that fucks some people over? But yeah. what if it's more helpful? And these but, ones are just there are doors. Not even that. This just game to a group of people, and they're like, I don't know. Do you want to pick blue or green? Do, I'm like, fuck it. Do you remember? <laughs> here's my point, though. Here's why I brought this up is because. In this game, you make the decision of doors, the same decision. You can argue if nothing's changed. The difference is that when you make a decision on the door, the only time that it matters is when you try to make a decision to go in the door with Quark while he's unconscious, yeah. which will always be met with denial. You are never allowed to do it, yeah. which is the most insulting thing because we almost killed two people. So you barely have decisions to begin with. Because in 999, we were given the option to literally kill somebody. And in this game, it's so fucking terrified of letting and you- And part of the morphogenic that, field thing that they make it put us through here is that we basically have to just pick every branch. Yes. So they don't even feel like decisions. They don't feel like decisions. You they just, feel like a you're task just, list. You're just completing the entire checklist. Yeah. Which means that the entire game is press A constantly, and then once every three hours you play an escape room, and then you just keep pressing A and watch the story just play out for you. So that means basically all the game has going for it is it's completely, uh, let's just call it what it is basically, it's basically just a linear story. Yeah, it is a linear story. It's not really even really a thing you make decisions in. And it's not like Detroit or other, like, more, or Walking Dead or stuff where, like, you'll play through it one way and make decisions and, oh man, I hope I made the right calls, and then it ends, and you only see that percentage of the content. Yeah. You basically have to see all the content anyway. Yeah, because a lot of the roots, of the way well, yeah, because it. the way the game's built is that you cannot finish the game unless you have the correct information to finish it, which then breaks, <clears throat> it breaks down the fundamental of, like, why is it a visual novel at all? Because you don't actually in, in have visual a visual novels, you make decisions. Yeah, but that's the thing, you in don't have... In normal visual novels, you make decisions and have, like, a goal of some but, kind. But look at it, it even in the perspective... One, you just click every single option until you get the good ending. But look at it even in this perspective of something like Gal Gay, or Gal Games. Which is like, uh, like it like barely, in, in a gal weird. game. It's weird because this barely qualifies as a video game as, until the actual yes. escape room comes up. And but those are so half-assed in this game compared to the previous one. But like, like it, they're weaker, right? It is, like yeah. They, because they like gave us two or three times as many of them. They're like really shallow. Yes. And some of them, and, in, some of them, we found the solution in in like five minutes. But here's the thing: is like th this is what's even more insulting. Is you think about this in the sense of a visual novel. Most visual novels, I would I would say, are gal games, which are games where you go and try to cat, you know, like win the heart of a girl. Yeah. When you do those, when you finish a route, you have a goal, and, you there's, and there's yes, but, there's like good good ways and the wrong ways of doing it. There endings. are good and bad endings, but the difference is, is when you get to an ending, it's an ending. Yeah. In this game, it's never an ending. It, there's only one game, ending in this the game. Time, there's not even an explanation for why you got kicked out. No. It's just like, oh. That's, and that's like, a, like, oh, we need some information. Oh, really? And then it's like, fade to black, start over. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's and, so unsatisfying. And do you remember, do you remember like even some of the endings? Like, oh, the ending where we died and then we found out that like K was a time traveler of us or like some kind, it was just a clone of us what's or something. Yeah, what's and, in Every almost but, every ending gives us a weird piece of information that's just not going to come up maybe ever or maybe only at the end. And even if it does, you can't leave the game off at that uh, that situation. Yeah. You can't stop. That's like not a real ending. So, Say for instance, like bring up the. Can you bring up the flowchart? But, but like, what's what's brutal here is that like, I had more faith in 999 until it ended. Yeah. Because like at 999, a bunch of weird, disparate, random of things kept getting set up, and we're like, oh, surely all these things will pay off at some point, right? Yeah. Maybe we'll be on the Titanic for like a reason, or maybe there'll be a reason why they keep talking about some mummy for some reason and shit like that. Like it must be all going somewhere, right? Oh wow, we're going to the library. The mummy must be in the library, and maybe the mummy's the villain or some shit. Like that kind of stuff was always happening. Now I don't have that faith anymore. So now when this game's like, wow, I'm a weird cockney robot, and wow, K is a clone of you, like, I don't even know if any of these are gonna matter. 
Like, for all I know, we reached the real ending and half of these weird plot points that are developed just never come up again, and they really were just a weird waste of time. Yeah. Just like them being, like, name-checking Schrodinger's cat and Prisoner's Dilemma like they're fucking smart. Like, so... They're exactly as smart as David Cage when they're like, this game's not about racism, I just put Nazi symbolism everywhere and put people in the back of the bus. So look at... So if we go to... Look at this flowchart and take it... Uh, we're looking at it in the sense of... These look at all the endings that we have. We have multiple, like uh, so many fucking endings. I think the only but thing you separating the you can't leave the game off on any of these endings. No, they're not. You real can never. They're, they're not real endings. No, that's the thing. They're not real endings. There's only yes, one every single one real ending, and that's a linear story. That means, and if yeah. it's a linear story, then why do you do it in this method? Because when you do it in this method, where it's so bloated and so huge, it doesn't. It's not a choice system. It's not a visual novel. It's a novel. That you that requires multiple restarts. It's a novel that has so much padding that it would be insulting to even sell this to children as a choose your own adventure book. Because even a choose be, your own adventure book doesn't make fine. you redo it again. I would be fine if it, of it being this bloated and technically requiring you to do all the stuff. If at least it just was content that was varied and interesting and it was going somewhere. Well, yeah, of course, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like a visual each novel branch doesn't really take us to a massively different place. No, we just end up in the same series of rooms again, and then we die for another reason because somebody else opened the door this time or well, something. That's the point I'm making. Is that yeah. because that, that's the difference between this and dating? It's like, sims. Wow, is this the one is where it, Dio opens the door or Tenmyoji opens the door? Yeah. Wow. And what a, I, that was worth the extra five hours I put in. And the point I'm saying is like in a visual novel where you date a girl, every route, even a bad ending, is different. There's differences in those routes that is enough to justify going through that route. Like, I don't feel like it was a waste of time for me to go and try to pursue one girl and then pursue a different one because... Because the, the, they're mutually exclusive they're, endings. They're very different endings, they're very different situations, conversations, every choice. There's so many different things involved. Zero Escape has none of that. It has one binary choice at all times, and it never gives a choice that actually. Look at the. You can see the choices. Yeah. The choices are one, or A and or B. You can see how a they're, or they're, B. even on the flowchart they're all like identical. Yeah, they're because of how little there is to them. It's literally a copy paste. The entire, the entire thing is just the same became, amount. It somehow became more homogenized than the previous game. Yeah, because at least you remember the first 999 had that Every one you got that one route choice. that went like directly to the submarine ending. Yeah. It was like everything's fine, everything's fine. You fucked up. And it's there, like the last game had like three choices and they were like completely different branches each yeah. time, where this one is literally like, no, you will like, play through the non ray game. Like remember we didn't even want to go to the flow chart because it might spoil things for us. This can't like, spoil part, anything. Because yeah, it that's, all looks the same. Because it's all the exact same. And that's like the most insulting What's thing. What's a little brutal is the fact that you basically finish the Nonary game in every ending. Yes. <laughs> from front to from front to start. Exactly. That's a lot to go through. Sorry, we went on a fucking tirade here, it, but it's yeah, like but it, 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 an update has been overdue. I'm going on a discussion about it. It and that's the thing that's, is like that's I know more, that's that's like a discussion beyond just saying what's going on in the individual. Scene. <laughs> yeah, it it just it just gets frustrating because there there are the people that will see this. There are as... just such better ways to do this. And playing Omen Side really fucked with me because I was like, oh my god, this is just zero escape except I'm having fun. Yeah, and I like it and I care about what happens. It's just I I get really upset when there's the the people who don't see that we're we're not sitting here and we're not like. Goofing and gaffing about it. shitting all over this game. Like we, we I, gave this game a we get we put it we gave it a year long break between games so that we could like give it a shot. Yes, because like, we didn't want to go into this game with a negative uh, mindset we had from nine nine nine. We would have been so much burnout from going and in directly the from nine nine nine. First thing the game does it says like oh that was a waste of time because this game sucks more than nine nine nine. It's like oh thanks. This game I does that. almost everything worse. The it's, moment we start the it's game, it's more repetitive than nine nine nine. It's more monotonous. It has <sighs> less development. It's more annoying in many cases. It it took the part where that from nine nine nine. Where they're like, oh, we kind of JK. We didn't quite tell you the rules and multiplies it. Yeah, like doing it more and more and more and more to a point where you almost think that Zero doesn't want you to live because he has, doesn't tell you about rules until like it's about to kill you. It has a narrative that feels designed to cause agony in the players just because of the fact that like you keep learning pieces of information that just won't come up again. Or if they do come up, they'll come up in the final, final ending, and not any moment sooner. And yeah. there's so much time between when you learn these things and those things. Yep. Like, uh, just the number of disparate elements, like the key for K and all those other things, and 
the weird robots specifically the key like we keep waiting for someone to turn out to be a robot but who knows if that's ever going to come up or if that's going to be a weird element that they drop like the fucking alice Ro alice mummy that might not even be canon anymore well like, it's not remember because she has like a father now and she can't have a yeah, father so if the, she's a fucking mummy from like it was the, the most times. disgust element of all of zero of uh, all of nine and nine arguably and it never came up again i'm losing my mind here man it's and look at this look at like go down a little bit like scroll down Look at these fucking roots. Like, what? there's just, there's so much little variation in them at all. They're just, they're so bare bones. Like, I know, for one, you go to the save screen, it shows a bunch of question marks. Oh, you mean every character in the game's head? Yeah. And then you realize, like, oh, so every character basically gets out or has some kind of conflict. Because that's all it is, is that, you know, like, we had the one where K left. I don't know, it's... It's weird. The thing that makes it a particular character's ending is weird at times. Well, yeah. Like Alice's ending was like, oh, that was that was Alice's ending. Okay. <laughs> like, and Clover's ending was like, hey, talk to Clover a little bit before weirdly an ending happened. I guess this is the Clover ending. Yeah. As opposed to like the K and uh, the uh, the Dio ending was the ending where we like fought him in the desert outside. Yeah, we like actually escaped with. That was the, the only Dio time ending. we escaped, but then nothing ever came of it. Yeah, because even though we escaped, the game just ended. Yeah. Which is weird. Like. Where's the story where we go out there and find out what's happening in the world? Well, you can't know, because at the moment you know what's going on in the world, then it ruins the entire reveal of the ending. Which is bullshit, because that's the whole point of playing- like, you're just cut- you're- you're cheaply cutting us off from getting the endings we want to get, and that's, like, not fair. Yeah. It's exactly as bullshit as that time where... Junpei got murdered by someone and saw who they were and it was like but didn't narrate who they were yeah. so like I don't even care anymore I'm like fuck you not even that it was worse because the entire rest of the game was Junpei narrating everything too much yeah and the one time and it's when he important. gets murdered it doesn't he doesn't narrate who the murderer was which is even more confusing because supposedly all the narration is is June's perspective in that game so June doesn't care who killed Junpei because all of the narr- if Junpei speaks, that's Junpei, all the narration in that game was supposed to be all June the entire time. Yeah. So June doesn't care who killed Junpei? What the fuck? It's so confusing and baffling. I just- I- 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 I, I might split this off separately as being like, part 72.1, the podcast. That's fine. It's just- <laughs> If I remember. It's like, good god, like you have to at I'm some point- this is gonna be a nightmare because there's so much. You have to There's at some so point much. acknowledge that 999 isn't a cohesive or isn't a well thought out designed story. It is at the very least like, you know, like in book club, go go play Omen Sight. Yeah. So just so you can tell what we're talking about here of what pacing means and stuff like that. Or what it's like to have, you know, story reveals you care about, like like separated at like even intervals sort of throughout a narrative that you structured and planned out and it's yeah. not a weird mess of infinite repetition and time wasty. I will admit this, I looked up because I was, I was getting kind of annoyed. I forget, I was having a conversation with somebody. I was getting really fucking pissed off about this game. You already managed to do that when we haven't even uh -oh. put the videos out? <laughs> it's just in Discord? Uh-huh. You're getting arguments with people in Discord now? Yeah, but... <laughs> the, the whole reason we didn't put these out is so that people wouldn't argue with us during, while it's happening. No, no, so no, no. I don't, I don't mean, like, spoiler arguments. I meant, I mean, like, just saying, like, the writing is bad and not talking about spoilers. Just saying, oh. like, this is, like, this is Yeah, for those that don't know, we're pretty much recording this entire series before any of the videos come out. For yeah. For explicit purpose, because... People spoil them! Yeah, if you, argue, if you say anything, people almost always argue against your argument by spoiling the story, basically. Yeah. And it's like, all right, all the more reason not to put this out while it's being recorded then. Because so, they'll, they'll, the audience will make the series worse. Someone argued to me that the uh, the flow chart in Virtual's Last Award is really piss poor um, and clearly was just kind of a, it was like, wasn't well thought out. And they said that uh, three was a little bit more well thought out. More like one, more, more like 999 was. And I looked up the one for three. It looks identical, doesn't it? Except forked. No, it looks like somebody had an aneurysm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like somebody just took this root, like took this entire model, and then just put their hand on it and moved it around a lot. And then all the roots are just like, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, uh, but there's no, there's no, there's no choices be, being, no, there, no, there's no choices though. That's just, it's just not straight. Why did you, I, I just, thought, I thought it was just like this, except they had diagonal lines in it. Yeah, they just like some. No, there's some of them are like little 
like winding paths which is like we it just banded Maybe they just weird. ran out of room because <laughs> of the diagonal lines so they had to it, wrap around them it, it looks like a mess and i was like how did you just go back to what happened 999 just go back to yeah. you didn't lose the game you can just boot it up at any time and just play it and see like oh that's a flow chart i i, I get it but yeah, so where we were right there. Yeah. So we still have- We got a couple of branches to go up where one, one's a death and one's a character ending. Yeah. What is this book? What was that book ending? Uh. I don't remember what was cutting us off. Five minutes of life, warehouse A. What? I don't remember. This is the pa username and password one, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the one where we don't have enough cures. Five minutes of life? I think we just don't- I don't know, we just don't have some piece of information. I mean, we, whatever it is, we don't have access to it because it's black. So we'll, we'll, we'll know when it- when it turns green, we'll know what it was. I don't know. Kay, who had gone through the red door. And Dio, who had gone through the green door. Infirmary. Where we killed him. <laughs> we drowned him. We harvest his organs to make me human again. What? Apparently his condition has not worsened, if that's what you mean. He is still resting. However, we good. I'm going to the infirmary. Uh, Ten Miyoji, please wait. You have 45 minutes before you die. Ten Miyoji ignored Kay and took off at a run through the yellow door. And we're just following, apparently. Nope. Oh. Oh dear. He's gone. There was something I needed to tell him. Well, it's not like it matters. The girls will just tell him when he gets there. He'll uh, calm down once he's seen the kid. Clover and I looked at one another, eyebrows raised. Uh. What are they going to tell him? Well, you see... What? You found virus medicine in the laboratory? Yes. Unfortunately, we found only a single vial. <gasps> then we can cure Quark's Radical Six. So it would seem. Well, I guess we should head over to the infirmary and see how he's doing. Good doing. Good doing. We're waiting on good doing. Come on, let's go. <laughs> waiting on good doing. <laughs> let's go go go. Psych. Alice is infected too. Oh no! Be fine now. Psych, we can actually make more, so don't that use it yet. That happens in no more timelines, huh? What? Alice gets infected? Yeah. Well, she dies in most of the other ones. You're right. That is true. <laughs> uh, God, in that one ending, didn't we make another uh, another copy of the cure, then use both of them, and then we had none? Yeah. When we could have made more, like a not stupid person. Yeah. Why do? What the fuck's wrong with us? It might take some time for him to recover fully, but the worst is over. Well, you say that as if it's not even more stupider that the cure exists, but apparently Radical Six is still just a problem in the outside world. Yeah, why can't we just keep replicating it? It seemed easy. Did the cure come after the Radical Six wiped everyone out? Luna's voice was quiet as she stepped back from Quark. She held an injection gun with an empty vial. Delicately, she placed it back in the cabinet. Oh, they gave it to him without even... I feel like a document might have set that up, actually. I think it might have- I think the cure came just, in, like, too late. Well, yeah, but I'm sure you can- world. You can still probably replicate the cure in a mass enough amount that can fix everybody. Everyone who's left? But yeah. There might, be, there might not be anyone left, though. Jesus Christ, how late were you to the cure? Like, I humanity already killed itself off? Damn. I will say that if, if everyone is dead, then this entire game's kind of pointless, isn't it? That's the thing. If everyone is dead, the game is Then is winning is losing, because there's nothing yeah. out there. There's nothing out there. At least in 90, we're going to drive across the Nevada tundra, uh, tundra and arrive in fucking California, in, and where, ni where society still exists. Yeah, I was going to say, in 999, the only, the only downside is you leave and realize that nothing like you were just trapped inside of a stupid building like based on the current piece of information we have so far the only reason to win is to not die here but except you can live here better than you can out there except for the bombs 
Like if you if you can end the nonary game, which is easy, you just hit round three and it stops. Yeah. Then you can just hang out here and eat rations and sleep and hang out. There's the a garden. You can literally keep making food forever. There's a garden. There's rations. There's like a, there's multiple entertainment rooms. There's booze. There's like there's hospital. This is like an entire society down here where you can at least live out well, your life. It's a bunk. It's clearly a like, a, a bunker for uh, apocalypse. We don't, we don't we don't have the genetic diversity to have, sustain a population of any kind. But we can at least live our lives out here. Whereas if we, if if the world is fucked as it sounds outside, we just go out there and die. And Wait, it's how many people? And it sounds you, like it's completely pointless to even win this game. How many people do you need for gen, uh, genetic diversity? Definitely more than nine. A lot more than nine. Well, there's one, two, three. A lot more than nine. Four girls. There's four girls, and the rest are all guys. If you can count them on one hand, you're pretty fucked. <laughs> It's a pretty large number of people. Like when they talk about wildlife populations where there's only a few hundred left, they're like, well, yeah, they've already fallen below the stability for genetic diversity and they're fucked already. Oh God. Yeah, you need a lot of people. It's, it's bad. It's bad. Well. Quark has, uh, has been laid out on a crude cot and was still sound asleep. His breathing was even and his expression was peaceful. Wouldn't it be nice to meet this character? I mean, you know, like, not fun of children in, in video games, generally, but like... I would like to know what his hat cool is. It would be cool if this character was ever conscious in this game. He is, for like, one round. He's awake, he's awake long enough to tell us about Tenmyoji's personality, basically. He's awake long enough to make us question Dio's, uh, general honesty. Yeah, we're like, is, and... Dio, is Dio lying to us? And he's like, ah, Tenmyoji's a drunk horn dog. And then he's unconscious for the rest of the game. Yeah. Or trying to murder himself. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, maybe having a kid around the entire game would be kind of annoying, but like, we don't even have a- this character's not even developed, and we're supposed to- and most of the game revolves around trying to save him. Yeah. <laughs> over and over again, like ten times. That's the worst part, is that at least it would be more interesting if it was various other people getting infected, but it's always Quark. Yep. Which means we always have the exact same reaction, which is oh, Tenmyoji freaking that'd out. That'd be so much better if a different person was infected in every time. Why wouldn't it be? Why would you not have a different person? You have nine fucking characters, or you have eight fucking characters, not because we're not going to get infected. But no, it's but always Quark that gets infected. Always. And it's, and it's always Luna and Lotus dying in like half the timelines. Yeah. He looked like any other child, sleeping soundly after a long day of doing whatever it is children do to amuse themselves. Were you never a child before? Playing. That's the word you were <laughs> Yeah, the word for. is playing. The word is playing. <laughs> I mean, I hate children, was but the, I know what children do to amuse the, themselves. Was like, the author never a child? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Is he, was he, he actually was he born, come out of a test tube fully grown? He was born an adult who just used morphogenic is that fields. Is he writes this way? He's never <laughs> met people and never has been a person? He's just in an office like, Whatever it is children do to amuse themselves. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Do you that's good. Is I, that... That's the final draft of that script. <laughs> who did who did do the check Can of this script? Can you imagine? Oh my God! Can you imagine proofreading a script that that's this repetitive? Could you imagine that? <laughs> could you imagine if this entire game is like very different in Japanese? What like better? Yeah. Oh Jesus! Like what if the what if the translation just sucks? What if it's a really Don't bad give translation? Him an out. <laughs> I'm not giving him an out because they they still have to hire somebody. Are you implying the guy like they had a word here that made sense? And like, I can't read that word. Uh, whatever it is, children do. Yes, <laughs> I am. I'm legitimately saying they probably didn't pay a good for a good translator. Uh, that'd be, and, okay, well, it's your homework now, Andrew. Dude. Go play the Japanese versions. So I can't read Japanese, fool. Yeah, I can, can only speak it. I don't believe you. Why would I learn? Why would I learn how to read runes? Runes. Runes. It's really hard. Ruins. I mean, some of them look like trees, which is fine because that, that, means... one, that one's a tree. Yeah, it means tree. The tree means tree. But like, I can't understand the one that means like rain falling on a on a house or it's, despair. Like, weird. <laughs> or despair. I know what that one is because if I just boot up uh, Danganronpa, it's probably like the first five symbols that show up. Can you imagine if you tried to do a learning Japanese class and then all the symbols pop up and there were just all the things we drew in Drawful? Like, oh, look, look, it's Bolimo. <laughs> I miss Bolimo. Everyone misses Bolimo. Do you miss, do, do, do you remember that time we had fun? Remember that time <laughs> that we got to play Jackbox with the Jackbox devs? And it was, that was fun. pretty fucking interesting. <laughs> I, if that I, was I a mean, weird day. We could probably play with a lot of other devs because honestly, all we but did I'm was scared. Well, all, but all we did with them was just ask, yeah. "Hey, can we play with you guys?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> they're like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> like it worked out like amazingly. We just asked them if we could play, and it worked. We should do that for uh, 
this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I don't want to go to when jail. We play the next Zero Escape game. You have to just sit here across the table and make contact, eye contact with us the entire time. I, I don't. I don't think I could. I, I couldn't you, keep you myself. Want, you want to yell it at him? Yeah, I would just be so mad. I would like every any time I see a line I'm upset with, I would just quietly stare at him very intently until he felt uncomfortable enough to apologize. Like even though he doesn't speak the language. Yeah, he would just be like, "See my son. See my son. See my son." In in Japanese. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, what? What? Speak up! Spoilers, Ten Miyoji. This is not the good ending. So no. No. <laughs> He's yes. dead. We analyzed the vial and confirmed that it was definitely Excelivir. Now that I've administered it, the Excelivir should eradicate the virus completely given enough time, right? Yes. Oh God! Who would be the asshole to do that? Do what? Just like. So, bro, Excelivir now. <laughs> it's like you just swap out the drug. Swap out the drug. Uh -huh. Dio. Why? Dio has no need to do that. Because he's Dio. It was me. He already planted <laughs> bombs. As long as he gets nine, he's just gonna leave them all behind. How will he do the Admiral Akbar style me meme where he says the thing? It's a trap. He has to say it was me. Do you think he ever says that in this game? Has he said that yet? What? It's me, Dio. Yeah, it was me. I yeah. think I, I'm sure there's some kind of like licensing agreement where you can't do that. <laughs> I'm do, sure. Do we discuss the fact that I saw that scene finally and I was really confused by how it doesn't even make sense? Like, it's not even like his master plan or anything. He's like, it's over who kissed a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't like, it? That's why it's so great. That's what no one ever would expect. Everyone thinks it's going to be like somebody who like reveals his master plan and where he betrayed people. And it's like, no, he just kissed a girl. Yeah, because he just runs in. He's like, it was me, Dio. He was like, oh, somebody up, like someone kissed my girlfriend. I'm really upset. And he was like, haha, that was me, Dio, all along. And it's like, what? D D -Y. <laughs> like, D -O -Y. He does the same thing when he kills his dog. What the fuck? He kills his dog. He's like, who could have killed my dog? He's like, it was me, Dio. I was like, Dio, stop. I'm like, get out. <laughs> he, he does it like three times. It's at some point you're like, okay. Sh you know, Rule of threes. Yeah, it's like, you know, shame on me. Shame on you. Okay, Dio, now get out. Like, you, yeah, you Dio, have to leave. <laughs> like, Dio, stop. Thank goodness. Don't yeah. say that. You're about to get infected. <laughs> there for a while that's for sure I felt some uh, some of the tension disappear from my shoulders and I let out a breath that I hadn't realized I'd been holding uh, <laughs> we weren't out of the woods yet but at least quark was safe I'll see Tenmyoji did too Tenmyoji let out a long shaky sigh and lowered himself into onto one of the empty beds specifically the one with the dead woman <laughs> He rubbed his hands weirdly yeah, across his face. He's just laying down next to a corpse right now. I mean, so is, you know, Quark. And I thought I saw the glint it's of really tears. really uncomfortable. <laughs> it would be more uncomfortable if Quark didn't know that lady was dead. I didn't know what to say other than thanks. You saved his life. I don't know the words to tell you how much that means to me. You just no, did. Please. It was nothing, really. We just happened to be the ones who went through the red door. Where is Kay? He's not in here. He's still in the warehouse. Dio and Kay stayed behind. Oh, God. They went there to wait for you guys while we came back here. We figured someone should explain what was going on so you wouldn't come back to an empty warehouse. <laughs> so Dio and Kay were the ones who opened the AB gates? Not both of them. There was only one door open. <laughs> Tell them how Quark's doing. Kay will want to know at least. Yeah, you're right. I nodded and headed back toward the other side of the door of the room. I was nearly there when Tenmyoji suddenly spoke. That's right. Huh? You know that memory card we found? This thing? <laughs> I pulled it out of my fanny pack. I think I know how we can take a look at what's on it. Is uh, it the computer screen in this room? Uh, oh my god, wait, what? You, 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 you do? No one ever knows. Remember? <laughs> there was a memory card just like it that we used to solve the puzzles in here. Yeah, he's right. There's a slot next to the screen. It should work for this one, too. It's the one that has three hilarious giant glowing arrows pointing at it, because that's what a consumer product would be. No, no, those are the power buttons and the no, volume not, buttons and no, the channel. Not. 
Fuck no. <laughs> can you Fuck imagine? No. Can you imagine having a flat screen that just had giant arrows pointing at where the fucking plug-in ports are? Jesus. Aside from not even ignoring just like how like how annoying it would be to look at that in the darkness when you're trying to watch something. There's just three just, yellow lights. Yeah, they just never go away. Like they're there to show you where the fucking steps are in the movie theater, but they're on the screen. Yeah, that would be kind of a pain. Oh yeah, there it is. Right, yeah. Well, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I want to see what's on it. Okay, just give me a minute here. It's just porn. I slid the card into the slot next to the screen. No sooner had I done that, so then an image of a waveform popped up on the screen. Is there an audio file on here? Uh, Audacity, uh, is that you? Yes, actually, it is exactly <laughs> Audacity. It's, yeah. Why don't we turn up the volume a bit? This Wait, audio, there's, a, there's audio on this TV? This audio is compressed as fuck, by the way. It is super compressed. Oh my god, it's almost as compressed as the average so uh, soundscape of any Japanese game. Also, apparently the- That's like Sonic the Hedgehog video game compressed. Oh my god, what if it is just the voice clip that is going to actually play in a moment? But now we can see exactly how ugly they are at audio editing. <laughs> like, we can see just how blown out they make this audio stuff. Um, also, I want to point out that it's highlighting a specific spot of the clip, which is odd because if you put a memory card in, it wouldn't be able to highlight a specific spot of a clip. It would yeah. just play the whole clip. That also clip. means it's just going to play that part, right? Yeah. Weird. Luna tapped a few things on the screen and a bar began to move across the screen. Before long, a voice drifted out of the speakers. This is Control. How's it going over there? Bet you missed the sound of my voice, huh? Well, I gotta be honest. It's getting pretty lonely over here, too. Feeling kind of like howling at the moon, lone wolf style. Speaking of which, I'm looking at it right now. The old girl is beautiful. Never seen a moon this full. And that color. Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? The moon's this amazing red. If it wasn't so beautiful, it'd be kind of ominous. Wish you guys could see it too, but... Uh, sorry, forgot. You're supposed to be on Mars, aren't you? We are not on fucking Earth. You can't be right. No. I am no. totally right. Called it from the beginning. God oh, damn it. Fuck you. Why would we be on Mars? What the fuck? Because we have zero escape out of this place. Because <laughs> we have zero escape. We did it, boys. Roll credits. <laughs> like, no fucking way. We we're can't. not on Earth. We're oh my actually God. on Mars. Oh! I thought you were joking. I was. <laughs> <laughs> when I die, the only thing we're that actually I will on Mars. The only thing I'll remember when I'm passing from this world is how incredibly stupid Zero Escape is, and how incredibly fantastic it was. That's that even we, even at my my most condescending I attitude, like how they made a point to say that the, uh, the, atm the atmosphere is higher pressure inside than outside when outside is Mars. <laughs> this is even to keep the virus out. It's just so you don't die. <laughs> they're they're, they're like, literally just spacesuits because we're actually on Mars. Oh my god! <laughs> that's why it's all. That's why it's all a desert. Could you, imagine it's just we, Mars. could you imagine if we chose this path first and just knew this whole time that we were on Mars? I don't... I, I, How I, much I, that would fuck with the whole playthrough if we knew this the whole time? I don't think you can, can you? There wasn't a lock. I don't know if there was a lock. We wouldn't know, because no. remember... Oh, yeah, you're right. It would show. It's not even that far in the flowchart. Oh, my God. Could you could have, just we, find we, out we, you're on Mars, like, we, we immediately? We could have been here at the beginning if we just made the right three decisions. What? <laughs> Just know that you're not on Earth immediate. Uh, How would you play the rest of this game without getting annoyed? You'd you know, be like, our, our mistake of thinking we were on the moon at the beginning of the game was way less wrong than it seemed. Because we're on Mars, and that was. <laughs> oh my God! Well, you're right about not being on Earth. I can't believe I called that. How incredibly uh, stupid! <laughs> Could you possibly? What the fuck? Okay. Well, you know what? I'll God. give you I'll give you the zero escape. 
I'm intrigued. Where are you going with this? <laughs> Tell me more about this uh, this so-called solution to escape. What, what what do I get for leaving? You know the subreddit, not the Onion, where people can't tell the difference between satire and non-satire anymore because of how crazy news is. Yeah. This is like that equivalent. Like no theory is too absurd for zero escape. <laughs> There's no such thing as a theory that you can really fully dismiss. No I think that's how, it. No matter how stupid it sounds, because that might be the plot. <laughs> I think the creator has a T-shirt that says that. Not the onion. Not, no. Not the zero escape. No, just saying like no theory is too. <laughs> no theory no, too no, too absurd. Yeah, no theory too absurd for zero. Time escape. to play Schrodinger's planet. Fuck it. <laughs> what? I don't know. What is that like? Does, does the doesn't have to make sense. Does the prisoners planet dilemma. orbit when it's being watched? It's the prisoner's dilemma. We got a button over here, and there's an exact copy of this facility on Earth. <laughs> and they got us to get to the end, and we have to decide whether one of us presses the button, or the other one presses the button, or both of us, and it determines whether Mars or Earth explodes. <laughs> That's where this is all building up to, Andrew. You can't dismiss it. It's not too stupid, because it's all just dumb enough. Wait, so that'll the, be the false ending is if we pick the wrong one. That's the that's the one that's not quite the true ending, but it's next but it's long and it's next to the true ending is the one where we where we blow up Earth. <laughs> I wait. <laughs> Hold on. So there are multiple endings where people leave. How perfect of a parody of this game would be if that was this if like uh, that idea of an ending. So when how, how like that's a great idea, right? The prisoner's dilemma between planets and they can all, and they have to communicate via morphogenic fields. So when just when, like the original game where there was two two nanary games. By the way, Dio doesn't know he's on Mars, or does he? He doesn't because he pulled out the briefcase to try to communicate and couldn't get a hold of the uh, the HQ and was like, "Why can't I get a hold of HQ? Because you're not on Earth, but you the, idiot!" But the transmitter might be designed to transmit to Earth. It can't transmit that far. Why not? It would have to. No! It's space. It's not how space- It's space magic. You would need a huge system Probably, to transmit. Yeah. You would need a satellite to relay that information. I'm not willing to fully commit to the idea that Dio doesn't know. No, I think- It's hard to tell. I think all of us were kidnapped, because we were kidnapped on Earth. I will say that- So we were kidnapped on Earth, and then put on a spaceship, and then sent to Mars, and then woke up in a f Mars facility? Like, what? That means that, we, I will say that that certainly explains like the time skip more. Because we were in cryo we, sleep for, we in far, cryo like, sleep four for years to transfer. Yeah, we had to fly all the way to another planet. Oh. Kind of sucked to be the person who got transferred all the way here, just getting murdered before the game even started. Yeah. Well, at least I got to be an astronaut. But that still raises new questions about why this Mars facility is like retrofitted into being a bizarre game. It, well, I mean, it's, it's more bizarre to think that some. Some guy flew a spaceship. Some guy had access to a spaceship and was able to kidnap people, put them on said spaceship, and then fly that spaceship away. This is such a. I gotta say, this is such a more interesting detail than like a cockney robot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. This, yes. Because this actually, this is the kind of reveal I was complaining about not happening, which is one that actually recontextualizes the story. Yes. This is a crazy thing to find out, as opposed to the other ones where like, what does that matter? And then we never know. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we'll know 30 hours from now why that mattered. This one immediately like, oh shit. <laughs> Unless we're wrong. If this entire reaction is wrong, I'll be blowing my. I'll be like, what the fuck.